<clears throat> so our next speaker is uh, Frédéric Gueux, and he will spoke about um, crazy flies. Let's applaud him. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Fred. Um, I'm the maintainer of the Android client for the Crazy Fly quadcopter. And I'm going to talk about the Crazy Fly quadcopter in the local positioning system and what's happening in the, in the universe of the Crazy Fly. Uh, yeah. For those of you what, who don't know what the Crazy Fly is, it's a tiny quadcopter. Um, you're going to see it later. It's um, about the size of a, the palm of your hand. It weighs about uh, 27 grams, um, flies for roughly seven minutes. And similar to Arduino, it's expandable with so-called decks. So you have um, uh, yeah, kind of pin headers that you can put stuff on top and on the bottom. Uh, it uses a Bluetooth LE connection and also a proprietary uh, radio link with 2.4 gigahertz. And best of it all, it's an open source platform. Uh, it is developed by a, a company called Bitcrace from Sweden. And um, uh, yeah, they, they, some of the decks that they already did is, for example, uh, an LED ring or an inductive charging pad that you can put underneath. And some of the new decks that are coming out now, for example, the micro SD card deck that's already uh, out now, it's, it can be used for logging files uh, or for, for storing configuration files. The firmware supports a um, FAT file system on those uh, micro SD cards. And um, on, the crazy uh, on the crazy fly already, there's a pressure sensor. So you can do basic uh, hover mode or altitude hold. Um, to, to increase the precision, there's also um, an additional sensor deck. It uses um, time of flight. And up to a range of two meters height, uh, it will be able to, to be much more precise and do a better hover mode. Um, apart from the Crazy Fly uh, quadcopter system, Twitgrace itself, it's an, kind of an electronics company. They also do other hardware, for example, a little tiny battery charger, which can plug into USB. And you can also stack together to charge multiple things at a time. And very cool thing that comes out hopefully soon, it's uh, still in production or still in kind of beta testing, is the standalone controller, which is basically a gamepad which includes uh, a radio and an Arduino. So you can program it to not only be able to control the crazy fly, but also work as a joystick or whatever you like. And it's expandable with the Arduino uh, pins and so on. The most exciting thing uh, that's uh, hardware that's around the, the crazy fly is uh, the so-called local positioning system. And it's kind of an indoor positioning system similar to GPS. It's uh, based on the Decker Wave module. Um, it has a precision of up to 10 centimeters indoors. And it's uh, compared to other commercial indoor positioning systems that uh, work with cameras and so on, it's roughly 100 times cheaper. So it's uh, perfect for research and development and, and uh, yeah, much more affordable. And in the last year, it's, become, or it's, it's got to the state of early access. So researchers um, um, got their hands on it, and uh, the software behind it is, has improved. And now it f supports, um, after the first ranging mode was only kind of a ping pong system, where a ping pong uh, yeah, term, uh, where, it, uh, where the crazy fly always sent a packet to the anchors, kind of a, similar to the GPS satellites, sent a packet out and got one back. And, but this doesn't scale well for more than a few crazy flies at a time. And now it, is, uh, it also uh, provides or it also uh, uh, makes um, a ranging mode available that is more similar to the GPS because it's uh, just uh, passive. So you can have multiple crazy flies using that system without any uh, performance problems. So because it is uh, so cheap, uh, or not, not, not cheap, but affordable and, and robust. Uh, the Crazy Fly itself and also the inner positioning system is used a lot in research projects from different universities. It's used at uh, NASA, Stanford, MIT, uh, Microsoft, Bell Labs, ETH Zurich, and so on. I put some links in here uh, to, to, so you can check out the videos on, on YouTube. But uh, I want to show you a little 
showreel, just to, to you can see some of that stuff that's going on. So let's see if that works. Okay. Okay, so that's Swarm Research at USC. And uh, they use a commercial motion capturing system, costs uh, rough, roughly 100,000 euros. And um, yeah, they did some impressive work with uh, swarms of crazy flies. And they even built their logo with uh, the crazy flies, USC. So that's one project from Stanford, which combines a crazy fly with a climbing robot. <laughs> and also takes off again. Uh, you can also paint with crazy flies. Uh, you, they have a little brush, brush at, the, at the front. Uh, it takes up ink. And they can see it in slow motion. It puts a dot on the, on the map and paints pictures, for example, uh, a teapot. So that's the. The result in the end. <laughs> that was a very cool project. Uh, at Maker Faire Berlin last year, we found um, a guy who did his own wind channel and uh, put it in, we put it in there. And this is uh, using a, a MIDI controlled glove, glove that uh, is able to, to steer the crazy fly with a local positioning system. Um, this is also an interesting thing where they put optical flow sensors on the crazy fly, which makes it self controlled. So. Uh, it recognizes, for example, a wall and doesn't crash, in, crash into it. And it even works uh, in pitch blackness because it has infrared lights. So it tries to bump in there, but there's a wall on the, on the right side, actually. Uh, this is a project from the Intel Labs in Mexico, where they use crazy flies um, to do traje tra trajectory planning uh, through an obstacle course. And also very nice Microsoft HoloLens used with augmented reality and gesture control to uh, steer a crazy fly. It's on the table, the right, and we'll lift up, yeah. And one of the most famous things is a TED presentation from ETH Zurich, where they used a, a similar system to the local positioning system um, to also steer a lot of crazy flies over a crowd at the TED presentation. OK, so video is nice and all, but I guess you want to see it fly. So <laughs> it's coming up. I'm just going to, oops. Demo. OK, and I need some light for that. Oh. Ta -da. OK, here we go. So what I'm using for that is actually my Android phone with a client on it. And uh, it's connected through a little dongle that's up here with the antenna. So that's the crazy fly. And let's see if it works. OK, it seems to work. So now, um, in recent software updates for the Android client, uh, it's also possible to uh, control the LED ring that you see at the bottom. So you can change, you can switch on the lights and um, change the pattern. And um, let's see, we have also a police mode. Hold on. That's this one. So if the police is coming. And um, yeah, that's now basic support for uh, logging and. Um, and parameter subsystems, um, so you can, for example, uh, see the battery level on your phone, and we will also have some support for graphs and so on in the future, hopefully. And yeah, it's basically, apart from being a great research project, it's a lot of fun to fly. So, yeah. And 
Yeah, so that's about it. Thanks for your attention. And uh, one announcement, if you want to see more about the local positioning system, uh, I highly encourage you to go to a talk tomorrow at 1 o'clock at the Embedded uh, Mobile Devices and, what's the name? Uh, embedded Mobile and Automotive Dev Room. It's in the, in the room UD2.218A. So that's tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And uh, you'll probably see also some uh, crazy flies flying live, uh, controlled through an indoor positioning system. Thanks. Thanks for the talk, and as a small token of appreciation, we have for you a little box of uh, biscuit and chocolates. Thank you. Here you are. Thank you.